Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Plugged into Jesus by KCQ Good Tree Youth Ministry. As always, stay plugged and stay connected. Welcome back to another episode of Biblical Teaching and Encouragement. Hello everyone, it's Pastor Brian and I'm back to you. Um, today we're going to continue our Lesson 5, Part 2 of We Are Appreciated in Christ based on the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verses 15 through 23. I just want to let you know that there will be part three next week. So next Friday is going to be the day when we will complete lesson five on We Are Appreciated in Christ of the teaching series Christian Identity. So friends, let's not delay or hold up. Let's get right into it. Well, GTY, as always, I would like to start uh, with a question. I mean, maybe you guys are tired of getting questions from me, but as I said before, friends, it's not about um, I want to give you troubles in your hands, in your mind, or even in your heart, but um, the questions I'm asking you, or uh, it's the very same question that I would ask myself, and I actually do ask myself and other friends around me, even uh, my family members, because uh, not that I'm saying those questions are, are like outstanding, uh, but still, uh, those questions that I ask or I would ask or address to others uh, will be helpful for us to rethink about where we are and as Christians and Christ followers. And if there's anything that we should really um, find that it should be in us but lacking, then we have to ask the Lord to give what we need, uh, uh, not for the sake of our names or our prosperity, but for the sake of our living as Christ followers, true, real Christians and children of God, so that we can glorify Him, uh, not just living for uh, our own sake and our comfort in this world. So, uh, that was a long intro. Uh, how would you guys feel? How could you uh, actually feel or how would you feel if you are unappreciated? I mean, what could happen to us, to you and me and to anybody around us when you and I or we are not appreciated. Okay, look at this, um, uh, the capture, the picture that I captured from the internet. And when you, when I looked up the dictionary, unappreciated means not fully understood. Hmm. But what actually got me more is you're not recognized or valued. An example, it says, she had been brought up in a family uh, where she felt unappreciated and undervalued. So let's say you have done something. Uh, let's say you volunteered uh, at or in one of those events at the church. It could be Christmas event. It could be volunteering in uh, spring VBS. You were there as a small group leader or you were there a teacher. You were there golfers running around. Uh, you did a lot of physical works, uh, you sacrificed your resting time in the morning, uh, you participated in different practices, you did a lot of works. And let's say no one actually told you, hey, thank you for doing this. Hey, thank you for coming or being with us. You're not recognized, you're not valued, you're not appreciated. What could really happen? I mean, it's okay if you are not appreciated just like anybody else around you, right? But what if you are not appreciated, but you saw others except you actually were told, hey, thank you, or they were appreciated. I got to tell you that in that moment, often a sense of inferiority may form itself in our hearts and mind. I mean, we, we may start feeling like, hey, why did they say thank you to others, but except me? What I have done, is it not valued? Is it not really, rec I mean, it's not something that should be recognized? You know, the, the jealousy, covetousness, or enviousness, spy, backbiting, uh, even some sort of uh, rivalry between you and your friends or maybe siblings that uh, were serving together. You know, all those things could actually afford or come, uh, occur or come up in yourself when you are feeling like you're not appreciated or actually you're not appreciated, you're not recognized. 
That's why you're in your state, oh, I'm gonna beat him, I'm gonna beat her, I'm gonna work harder, let this be some sort of competition. Maybe they don't understand that uh, I'm here working hard so that they can, I can overcome them or, or, or you know, I can outperform them so that I can be appreciated, noticed, acknowledged by others. But I'm gonna do it. Maybe that's where we are. But friends, I gotta tell you, it happens because the instability in over our hearts. I mean, I think that's the one of those characters that may come from our sinfulness, our wickedness, um, when we used to be in a family of Adam, uh, where we actually had inherited the sin, which was leading us only to um, the eternal uh, destruction of our soul and our body. Uh, so we have the instability. I mean, think about Jesus Christ. Uh, when he was on the earth and he tried to feed people both physically and of course ultimately spiritually so that people may know and look at him as a bread of life not a bread of uh, feeding themselves physically so that people can sustain themselves and just continuously leave uh, but no one actually not only could recognize Jesus Christ as their Messiah and Savior for whom uh, this 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 nation of Israelites had been asking and one God and I mean and to send to them right and waiting for so many years and no one that's why could appreciate Jesus Christ for what he has done and they didn't even appreciate for who he is but Christ still did it right I mean that's what we should do I mean it doesn't have to be in a way that we have to expect from somebody and we say that we are not expecting from anybody and we shouldn't and we wouldn't and we don't um, when even we invest our time energy and power and resources so that we want to do something good for others and we say that we don't have to be appreciated but when we actually we are not we get jealous we get covetous we get envious we might be you know uh, backbiting or we might set up some sort of uh, rivalry and try to build the competition between others and me. And that really, really disturbs us. But friends, um, when you actually appreciate it by Christ Jesus, when you know that because you are in Christ, right? Actually, all of those dissensions actually could be gone away. And what you have to focus on is Christ Jesus, who He is and what He has done for us. So friends, this is the first point that I want to make based on the passage that is given to us. When we are appreciated in Christ, which is grace of God, right? We exchange com com competing for celebrating. I mean, I just told you guys, maybe what, just I, what I just had explained to you and shared with you is not the case for most of you guys or of most of you guys. Um, but I think still, we do have moments when we feel like, oh, I'm angry, I'm upset, because I'm not appreciated. But friends, what we have to focus on is not the fact that we are thanked and people are grateful about what we have done or what we do, but it's about what Christ actually has done and who He is. Think about it this way. First, we know and we have to admit that God has sent Christ Jesus to this human world. God the Father sent God the Son into human history and Jesus was empowered by the Holy Spirit and He lived a perfect sinless life which is a very exemplary, if not the only, no, if not if only, not only, not if not the only, it is the only perfect life that we all have to go after, resemble and follow its steps. In John chapter 1 and chapter 3, we read John the Baptist was appointing in Jesus Christ and he baptized and there was a Holy Spirit coming down as a light and dove onto Jesus Christ and with the power of the Holy Spirit, he lived the perfect sinless life. I mean, no God actually could do that. I mean, there are so many religions and we claim and declare that Christianity is the only true religion through which people, including us, could receive the gift of salvation. And there's a depravity, there's a, a corruption in our minds, in our soul, in our hearts. And we could only be separated and we could only face eternal death and destruction. But because Christ was sent by His Father God and was empowered, empowered by the Holy Spirit and lived a perfect life, we actually have a good example to look at and leave, just leave the way that He lived. 
And of course, Christ was crucified, friends. You know, I happened to go to Israel, and it was a beautiful place. Just the fact that I could be in a holy land, people call it holy land because <laughs> it, it is holy land, right? I mean, Christ was born, uh, Christ lived there, Christ did his ministry, and Christ was crucified, Christ was buried, and Christ was <laughs> resurrected. And I, I happened to go to the path where Christ was actually whipped and tortured, and he started carrying his cross, which is so heavy, uh, and get to the place called Golgotha, which, is, which means uh, skull, or the hill of skull, where he was crucified. Uh, which was crucifixion was uh, the most painful and um, dishonored death that that everyone or anyone could ever face in his or her life but he did it and when I was in Israel friends I happened to just walk through the path I was led by the tour guide and he was telling us uh, me and my friends uh, and this is a path that Jesus actually walked by carrying his Cross. And actually, I was able to learn that uh, there are different thoughts and minds about what were, uh, what was the exact route that Jesus actually walked. Uh, and actually, we chose one of those routes that theologians or scholars actually said, or stated, or declared. This is one is this is the right one. That is the right one. But it didn't really matter to us. We know that Jesus was somewhere in that land. And we know for sure that he carried the cross for us. That's what really mattered to us. It wasn't really important which route he took to get to the Golgotha so that he could be crucified and die for us instead of us as the wage of the sin. Our sin, not, for, not of his sin. Because he was sinless, he did not have a sin. Because unless he was sinless, he couldn't become an ultimate remedy to our sinful dilemma and its problem. So he was crucified instead of us. He carried the cross. He died instead of us. And he was buried. I mean, he, he, he literally died and he, went, he was put on the ground as any other dead man. But the thing is, he did not stay there. He resurrected. He opened the, uh, the stone, the gate of his tomb, and he resurrected like he promises. Three day and third day after he was crucified, right? And and he, once he 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 resurrected, what he did and what happened was he conquered Satan, he conquered sin, he conquered death, hell, and the wrath of God that was upon us because of our sin. And now that Jesus ascended into heaven and seated on the right hand of God. And he's there ruling and reigning from his authoritative position. Also, he prays for each one of us, looks after us. So friends, after hearing all of this, we should always just appreciate who Jesus is and what he has done. And that Jesus is appreciating you for you to try to uh, or seek or endeavor to follow him, to try to bear more of his likeness, his character, personality, and try to accomplish the mission that he has given to you. Uh, whatever the context that you are living in right now, either you're students, is you are working, is you a family member, you're the member of your KCQ, wherever you are, whatever you do, wherever you are heading now, all that you should be doing, all that you should be doing is appreciating Jesus Christ for who he is and what he has done, rather than being upset about not being appreciated. So that you're being jealous, covetous, envious, keeping spies in you, backbiting, or try to building some rivalry with others. So when we are appreciated because we're in Christ, friends, we don't try to build any tensions. We don't try to build the competition, whether we try to make celebration. Here's Christ in my life. Here's what he has done. There's only celebration in us. So friends, are you celebrating each one of your days in your life? Or you're just in tension. You're, you're in that disturbance. I really hope that you guys would be living with that sense of or feeling of celebration and appreciation to Christ. And being so stable, emotionally and stably. Because Christ Jesus, who has done such a great thing of saving souls, 
through his death, who lived a perfect life, is appreciating us. Point number two, when we are appreciated in Christ, we learn more about Jesus Christ. When we are in Christ and we are appreciated, we learn, we should, we could, we would, and we want to learn more about Jesus Christ. Let's draw our attention, uh, attention to today's passage, uh, specifically verses from 17 through 19. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. This is the word of the Lord. Friends, I got to tell you this. What is the what is the average years or month, let's say time or let's say years of your attending church? I'm not talking about KCQ. Maybe some of you guys, uh, you guys were born in KCQ. You grew up, you had never left. But some of you guys maybe came to us uh, because your family moved for some reason. Doesn't matter. But I'm talking about. Uh, I'm not talking about how many churches you have attended or you have attended until this days, uh, these days. But I'm talking about how many days or how many years you have attended the church and you've been a Christian. I'm pretty sure many of you guys have been Christian at least five years, if not whole life. Is that right? And, how, and then how many of you guys actually can say, I know Jesus Christ so well that there is nothing more left that I should learn or I should study for me to know who he is or get to know him better because I know about Christ upside down. I read all the stories, all the books. I know what happened. I know all the nuances of what he said, the parables, the ministries, his death. I know absolutely everything about Christ Jesus. So I don't need to do anything. How many of you or us can actually say that? I think no one. With that being said, this is a statement I want to make. No matter how long you have been a Christian, there's always something new you'll learn about Jesus. And I got to tell you, this is not what I say. This is what all other pastors, many of other pastors or theologians, Christians would say so. No matter how long you've been a Christian, there's always something new you'll learn about Jesus. Look, people say something about their self-improvement as a person, right? They say, oh, just always have that attitude of learning, training, rethinking, reconsidering, just self-evaluating because you can, not you can, you should always find a room for developing yourself and improving yourself, which is true, I believe that. But when it comes to Jesus Christ, yes, we know him. Yes, we know we heard what he has done. That's the news, that's good news, what we call the gospel, right? And because what he has done for us, offering himself as an ultimate remedy to our sinful problem, which is the eternal death and separation from God, we were reconciled to our Father God in heaven. We are adopted through Christ by our Father. We are proud of his family. Now we live this holy life. We are called to live this missional life on this earth. How actually we can say, oh, we know everything about our God. Look, we are the ones who are created, meaning God, Christ Jesus knew everything about us, each one of us, from head to toe, upside down, from left to right, even before we were conceived in our mother's wombs. He knew everything about us because he, we were created for Christ, not Christ created or was created for us. Do you know what I'm talking about? He is God. He, and we are His creation. He knows everything about each one of us, but there's no way we can know about it. Not because He doesn't want to let Him know, let us know who He is, but because of our sinfulness, our wickedness, and the limitness, we may not know 
But does that mean we have achieved to know Him in our life? That's something that we want to pursue. So friends, get to know about Jesus Christ. Get to know who He is, what He has done, what could, what could mean, what He told us and taught us and teaches us through the Word of God. It's not something that we call its achievement. So getting to know Christ Jesus as a Christ follower is not something that we achieve, but what we pursue. And that's how we are being transformed. This is a lifelong, time-consuming procedure that we always have to live with. That's the setting we should have in our lives. We never get to know Christ enough. We never get to know about Christ, of Christ, everything. Although he would want, want to let us know, know, let us know about him, but there's no way we can do because there's a, such a gap. As God, we are his creation. But the important thing is he loves us, so he always makes him or keeps himself available to us. There is a word, there is a call to worship. He calls us to worship him, right? We can be on, I mean, and we can come into his presence through prayers, through worship. And we can walk with Him. And He's present in our life. I mean, God is all-knowing, all-powerful, all-present. He's always everywhere. Is that right? That's why we talk about God. God's, God's omniscience, omnipotent, and omnipresent. And when Jesus was ascending into heaven, He said, I'm not going to leave you behind just like an offer. I'm going to send the Spirit of God that will come in from our Father in heaven. And Holy Spirit is with us. So friends, getting to know Jesus Christ is not what we can achieve just momentarily. Maybe some of you guys can agree, oh, yes, this is life, uh, not maybe, uh, this is time-consuming procedure, uh, but it, this is definitely not a lifelong journey. But I'll tell you, friends, just like many other pastors and theologians and Christians know and would state or would confess, Getting to know Christ is his lifelong journey. It's not something that we should pursue to achieve, but just pursue so that by it we can be transformed and be more like Christ Jesus. And as you are appreciating Christ Jesus, because you're loved, because you're favored, because there's affection of God coming towards you just like he had that affection towards his son Christ Jesus. So Jesus took us to his place and he himself went to the position of a sinner where he faced all of the shame, all of the condemnation, all of the suffering, all of the death instead of us. So when we are appreciated in Christ, friends, we should pursue to know Christ better. And friends, lastly for today, this is what I want you to learn. When we are appreciated in Christ, we are appreciated because we are in Christ, right? Otherwise, we're not appreciated in this world and we don't deserve to be appreciated but we're appreciated because we are in Christ and when that happens we may have deeper experiences of Jesus's power in our lives when we are appreciated in Christ we may have deeper experiences of Jesus's power in our lives <clears throat> excuse me please um, let me read today's passage Ephesians chapter 1 um, last two verses 19 through 20 and his incomparable great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. This is the word of the Lord. Friends, as much as we should know or we should get to know who Christ Jesus is and what he has done for us, just like I shared before, we should also experience more of Christ's power in our lives. And it does not happen by ourselves. I mean, you know, a lot of people say we should bear the fruit, right? As a, as, a, as, a con as a considering ourselves, especially when it comes to us, we are who? We are good tree youth. Um, and good tree should bear good fruits. Meaning that happens as we live with the power of Christ Jesus in our lives. And how do we get that power? Honestly, friends, yes, we go to church. Yes, we attend different conferences, seminars. We do volunteer in different events at the church. Uh, we even go to short-term missions uh, abroad, 
uh, both locally and globally, let's say. But in our ordinary life, we may not demonstrate the power of Christ Jesus. And I'm not talking about the power that this world actually defines. I'm not talking about power to crush or destroy somebody. I'm not talking about the power to destruct somebody, to harm somebody. I'm not talking about to take away, to steal. I'm talking about power that restores. I'm talking about power that revives. I'm talking about the power that it's going to bring a life to something that is dead, something that has been stopped. I'm talking about the power that's going to bring the heartbeat. I'm talking about the power that is going to bring the passion to live for Christ. I'm talking about the power that is going to bring you a life and light to the darkness. And it does not happen by who we are. It happens by who Christ is and what he has done to us in our lives. And as we come to Jesus Christ, accept him as our Savior by repenting our sin because the Holy Spirit helps us and guides us, instructs us, convicts us, refreshes us, and reminds us of, of what Christ has done for us, who God is. Because like I said, Christ sent Holy Spirit so that we may always be in His presence. So what happens to us as we are in Christ, as we are appreciated, rather than building all the scramblings, complainings, or competings, we should be celebrating. We should get to know Christ better. And also, His power should be revealed through our lives. So the Holy Spirit places the power of Jesus in us, power of life, so that we could live by experiencing the power of Jesus and His resurrection more and more and bearing more of His likeness. Just like get to know Jesus Christ is not something that we can achieve, but something that we should pursue as a lifelong journey, and we will be eventually transformed by His grace and mercy and love with His truthful um, uh, uh, the knowledge. As we pursue to live with the power of the Holy Spirit that comes from Jesus, we will see one another, even myself, yourself, ourselves, learning, changing, growing by the power of the Holy Spirit. And you and I, he or she, they, and we are becoming more the one that God wants us to be. And we are not trying to live the way that we, how we want to live, but we would want to and will want to live as God designed us. God assigned us. God planned for us. Of course, not for our own prosperity and comfort, but for His name's sake. For other souls to be reconciled to him, to expand the God's kingdom on the earth and in heaven. All right, dear GTY, this is all that I wanted to share with you based on Ephesians chapter 1, verses uh, 15 through 23, but uh, specifically from 17 through 20 for today. Uh, friends, we really shouldn't be living in tension, try to building all these competitions and feeling why I'm not appreciated because Jesus loves you and he appreciates you. And all that we should be doing, just appreciating Him for who He is and what He has done. And as the passage tells us, as we are in Christ Jesus, what we should be doing is pursue to know Jesus Christ and better and better and better. Like even the people in this world say, say there's always room for us to improve ourselves. And there's always room that we can fill up with the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And of course, not only we should know who He is and His life and His truthful knowledge, which is truth, and we should also experience the power of it. And that's how we um, encourage others to be reconciled to God. That's how we are filled with the joy and delight in our lives. And that should be our identity. No matter where you are, what you do, what you want to be or become, God will leave His plans in your life because He will place through all these procedures we would follow. That's it for today, friends. Much love. Let me pray for you. The loving God, our Father, we come before you and I lift up my friends. I pray that they will uh, follow you, Lord. And as they are appreciated, they always appreciate you for who you are, what you have done. And they will pursue to know who you are as a lifelong journey, as a Christian. And they will pursue to leave that power of Christ and your resurrection, Lord, so that we can contribute our lives to uh, the expansion of your kingdom. 
letters and let them and let us all of us to live with the joy and delight that no one can give and let us live in that assurance of faith in you lord we love you in jesus name we pray amen all right friends have a great weekend and i'll see you next week bye